Hey guys, how are you? Pat Simone here. So, on today's video, we're going to go over uh, some tip, tips and tricks on how to cut crown molding. Um, I get asked a lot um, on how to cut crown molding on the flat. Um, I'm going to show you both different ways, uh, a couple tips and tricks, how to measure, um, things like that. So. Right off the bat, <clears throat> the two most common types of crown are 3852 angle or 4545 angle. Okay, um, I didn't have a real crown molding with 45. This is a cold molding, but you could see see how both angles are even. Now, if you look at this one closely, see how this angle versus this angle is a little different. Okay, so this is a 3852, this is a 4545. Now when you put crown molding up, it's a 45, 45 degree angle, which makes up a 90, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to determine which crown you have. If you take your square, okay, and you seat it on your square like you would in the wall, if you notice, the bottom portion is three inches and the top portion is two inches. That's how you know this is a 3852. If it was a 4545 crown, that makes up a perfect 90, you would have the same measurement, which is one inch, one inch in this particular uh, case. All right, so now here's a nice little cheat sheet that I've been using for years. This is Joe Fusco's chart on how to, uh, on all the degrees, on how to cut, uh, what miters you need for your saw to cut your angles. So, in this case, <clears throat> you could see, we're gonna work with the 3852 miter, cause that's the only uh, crown I have in my shop. Um, but it also gives you the 45 miter. Now, here are all the wall angles. Okay, so if you go down to 90, your miter is 31.61 and your bevel is 33.86. So now, saw, you'll see 31.62 on my particular model. This is the wall, okay? On Fusco's, it's 31.61. That little bit will not make a difference, all right? And then on your um, your bevel, your bevel is 33.86. So if you roll your saw over, okay? Mine is 33.9, and it locks in on a particular setting, all right? Now, you notice how my saw is angled this way. When I come down on this, okay, you'll this will be an outside cut. To make an inside cut, you have to flip this back over and I'll explain all that to you. All right, so <clears throat> you always want um, the bottom edge of your crown facing you and the part that hits the ceiling hitting the fence. All right, so when you come down, made a beautiful um, outside corner. Okay, so it'll be on the wall like this. This is your other wall going in and your crown. When you have to make your, your second cut, okay, you gotta roll your miter over the 31.62, take your saw, flip it to 33.9, all right? Now we made two outside miters, okay? So, just imagine this was your, your outside wall cut. That would be 
your perfect 90 degree miter. Okay? Now for an inside miter, Turn your saw like this. See, guys, put your saw first. Now we got two inside fighters. That would be the inside of your wall, okay? Now, <clears throat> when you have inside miters, it's very easy to measure because you can measure from your long point of your cut, which <clears throat> if this was a full piece, you would measure from point to point in your wall and all you would have to do is hook on here like so. If you're measuring your outside corner, all right, you have nothing to really hook to, you know what I'm saying? So, there's a couple tricks that I do that make it uh, easy, okay? You can take your speed square, okay? You take your speed square, you put it to the short point of your cut, okay? Like this. And then what you do is, this is a little exaggerated guys, I have smaller squeeze clamps in my van. That's all I have in my shop. You take your squeeze clamp. All right. And you could hook on right here and have a nice accurate cut if you're by yourself. All right. Which uh, comes out really accurate. Two. You could keep your tape, you know, if you have a nice flat surface, if you keep your tape on the one inch mark, okay, like so, that'll make up for this dimension here between your short point and your long point. But if you do that, you got to calculate backwards that you're an inch ahead when you mark your piece, okay? Or you can put it on your saw right right where your uh, blade comes through on the saw and line it up like so perfect to your shore point right here measure and mark your piece okay so guys basically that's how you cut <coughs> that's how you cut your ground molding on the flat. Now just remember, you have to determine if it's a 38.52 or 45.45 to get the right miter marks on your saw, okay? Um, this isn't my favorite way to do it because you're always flipping, you know, flopping. Um, a lot of old timers cut it this way. Um, you know, I guess it's a matter of preference. Uh, they'll tell you it's more accurate than the second way I'm going to show you. Um, they say it's neater. Uh, you know, the only time I do it is is when I'm cutting extreme crown molding that is too high for you know the crown to hit. So um, I've worked with eight inch crown before where I've done it. Um, so now let me show you the second way. So guys, these are crown stops made by DeWalt. Um, I've seen guys have these on Bosch saws as well, uh, rigid saws. Um, I've only used DeWalt chop saws. You know, I 
I'm not promoting it. I just, that's what I'm used to. Um, so these screw right to the side of your saw. So what I do is put these on, crown stops. Just when, when you're screwing your, your nuts in, just keep them a little snug at the moment. Okay. Alright guys, so now you take your piece of crown that you're working with, okay? Um, what you want to do is spin it upside down, okay? You always got to remember the, the bottom part goes to the top of your fence. And then you want to seat it in your saw the way, the way it's going to be seated, okay, on your wall take your stops push it to the face okay now guys I got these on Amazon um, I believe they were like 40 bucks okay but uh, they're very common I've been using them for years now guys it's as easy as that now basically it cuts all this math out on the on the flat and it's already telling me and the saw that it's a 3852. So now basically all your cuts will be 45. Now just remember it gets a little confusing because you're making your cuts upside down. So you gotta pre-think your cuts. Alright? So let's make an outside marker. That's one outside miter. Alright, back to 45. Slide it down a little bit. Zero at the moment. All right, guys. So now you got one outside cut. Perfect ninety. Okay. Now for your inside, basically just slide, slide the piece. And what's nice about these stops, guys, if you just keep your thumb out of the way on top. It keeps it nice and cradled. You don't have to worry about it moving. All right. We'll do an inside. So basically, you just take your saw, go from 45 to 45. You make your mark. got two inside cuts, okay? Inside miters. Now, like I said guys, this is the easiest way to measure because you pull your tape right from the end, all right? So you would just measure corner to wall, corner to wall, and you know, with this you might have to roll it as you work, you know, to get the miters nice, either up or down. And what I usually do is I make the bottoms connect real nice and then I'll take a flat bar, you know, as they're nailed snug and, you know, push these two miters together. You know, in old houses, the ceiling's all over the place. I might stick a shim in the corner to keep the compression down, to keep the miters tight, nice glue on your joints. And that's it. Now, um, if you don't have these stops, Alright guys, so the next the next best thing if you don't have those stops it doesn't hit it when it's on the bevel. So take your crown again, make sure it's cradled real nice. You want this back part totally flat against your face and the bottom part totally flat against your uh, base of the saw. Okay? I take a mark, my pencil, alright, I 
with that. Just so I know where I am. Take some blue tape. Put it like that. Put my piece back. Make sure you're nice and snug against the fence. Make a nice mark on your blue tape. And that's how you know your line is uh, the bottom of your piece will be there every single time and your cuts will be the same. You know what I'm saying? So what I do is I just rip these, fold them over so nothing's going to appear. you got a permanent line now. So put your base right on the line. Now this you got to make sure guys you hold nice and slow. Alright, turn your saw. There you go guys, another outside corner. Okay? So my method is always this way because it's it's just faster. You know? Um, you know for me. I, I like I, I in my opinion, if you could hold this right against your fence, snug, flat, the way it's supposed to be every time, um, I feel like it's just as accurate as keeping it on the flat. Uh, like I said, I know I said, keep saying this, the only time I do it on the flat is when the crown over exceeds my soil depth to get down. Okay? Um, and that's it. The advantage to coping versus just gluing your miters together Sometimes when you have an old house, the corners are out and they're not a perfect 90 and you really got to work um, on to close your gaps. With, with coping and bumping, um, it helps a lot when the corners of your walls are not a perfect 90. And, you know, that's the advantage of cutting on the flat too with Joe Fusco's chart because it gives you different degrees. So if you have a digital protractor and you put it in the corner and it says, you know, 94 degrees or 95 degrees, it, it adjusts that far. So um, that's one advantage of cutting on the flat. So what you want to do is you uh, make your inside corner, okay? Keep it on your lines, perfect. Alright. Now, when you cope, you have to take all this meat out to accept the other piece, okay? Some guys use a hand coping saw. Um, I, I do, it's whatever it's whatever I feel like it. Um, I like to use my jigsaw. And what I have is a nice thin coping blade. Okay. So what you want to do is, I put it on the edge of the saw so it's nice and firm. out okay so basically you make your inside corner you just follow the line around okay now this is hard to do when it's it's not on the wall so you know one this piece this piece will be laying flat on the wall, and then this piece will accept it just like that. You know what I'm saying? And that's why you gotta dig out 
all that material. See the back of it? So you don't hit it. Um, and this makes a really, really nice tight joint. And, and you know, guys, this demonstration just proves a point, and I hope this camera got the shot good. Um, that a lot of guys on YouTube say you can't cope in production. And I that didn't take me, that took me under a minute, in my opinion. So, um, a lot of guys buy the fancy uh, coping tables for their jigsaws. Um, you know, I guess it just takes practice and I've been doing it so long, but I just zip through it. Just keep your saw on a nice angle. Um, I would say more than, you know, a 30 degree angle. Cope it out, follow your line. And your first time at it, go nice and slow. And make sure your fingers are way back and your blade doesn't clip. That's why I like to take my piece. That's why I like to take my piece when I coat. I like to rest it way out so the piece doesn't vibrate. Open, take a little sandpaper, clean it up real fast, just rub it on the edges. And that's it every every time. Nice tight, nice tight, beautiful piece. There's the back of it. See how it's all dug out. And um, I gotta tell you guys, when you do this, and uh, you, you just put a little bead of cork and wipe it out, look perfect, perfect. And they tend, they tend to, they tend to hold better than a miter. Cause in every house I've ever built, no matter how I glued it, how I nailed it, um, you know, as soon as that winter comes and that heat hits it and it shrinks, you always see, you know, especially especially uh, scarf cuts um, that that come together. Like say you have a wall that's longer than 16 feet um, and you gotta put two together. Actually, while we're doing it, let's touch on that. So, <clears throat> I see a lot of guys make a 45 degree scarf. I don't do that, I go, I go 22 and a half because it makes more of a squarer butt and it holds tighter. So basically, put it back on your line, okay? 22 and a half degree. Okay? So say your two runs were longer than your 16 foot lengths. So all you do is butt these up together real nice. And guys uh, I hope this video helps you out um, if you haven't subscribed consider subscribing I do videos all the time um, any questions comment down below I'll be glad to uh, answer them for you and I'll see you on the next one guys